What's up, Sassy Gamers, and welcome to Got Our Attention Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 10, and uh, I'm your host, Mike, or Zysia. Also along with me today, I have Phoenix Nova, Day Drinker ATL, and Demurin. I think I'd, I'd rather you up? say it's Episode X. X. Oh, no. Don't, don't, no. Don't, don't, no. Don't confuse oh. me, because and then I would think the whole episode's about me, which I typically do anyway, but... I mean, if, it kind of is. <laughs> If the whole episode was actually about you, it'd be like 10 minutes long. There's not much to say. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ouchie. Okay. Demir, are you saying that topic would be a little short? Oh, my God. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn. Well, if, you've ever, if you don't Zinga. know me personally, I'm not a very tall person, even though Brian says I'm one of the tallest people he knows, but really. You are the tallest tall. man I know. I'm like barely like three foot seven or something. I don't know. That's uh, much smaller than most people. <clears throat> Because you're so, still taller than me. And, and you're like three foot six. So No, no, I am not. <laughs> I earned my five foot status and I am not letting it go. Uh, that's that's fair. I feel that. Thank you. I can definitely get on board with that. Uh, so starting off today, before we kind of get into some of the things we're going to talk about today, I want to just shout out to all of you guys who helped us out with Shocktober uh, this past month. Uh, we played a, fr- a scary game every Friday. Uh, to raise money for Able Gamers Cherry. And because of you guys, we were able to raise $1,042.71. So shout out to all of you that made that possible. And that's just super awesome. Our goal was 1,000. We exceeded it. Uh, and obviously, Able Gamers is super pumped. And, uh, and actually, on the stream when we were talking, uh, Vinny from Able Gamers, who was with us, uh, even talked about some of the things that you know this money would be going towards, is helping you know, someone that does have a disability try to be able to, to play a game however they need to modify a controller uh, or keyboard or mouse or whatever to make that happen. So uh, it was just really cool. Uh, I definitely say check out that stream. Uh, really, really cool um, fan or really cool guest we had on. Uh, we had Nito. We had uh, Kathy uh, from uh, Terciops Ter- 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 Studios. Trinkatus. Oh, my God. Also- you said it right. I had to think about it. Uh, and then also Vinny from Able Gamers. Uh, so it was really cool. Uh, we had a, just a blast playing Phasmophobia, uh, raising money, and it, you know, it was just it was just a good time. So I uh, can't wait till next year. But again, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. That's, uh, that's super awesome. So uh, so today was kind of interesting. I was sitting there thinking, uh, well, I was talking to them, like the rest of them about this. And I was like, you know, what can we talk about today? And, you know, there's things in the news, like the whole Twitter thing. And I'm like, I don't know if I really want to get into that. Like, there's just so much just crap really with all of it. I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not wasting my time on that. So it's still I decided evolving. to come up. Yeah. And it is still evolving. Like it's kind of wild, but uh, so what I thought about, I was like, you know, we haven't really talked about like the games that really kind of changed us. Uh, and I know there's a lot of like famous iconic games that kind of changed. You know, I initially added this as games that changed the industry. And I'm like, but that's so like large of a topic that, and it's kind of also opinion and it's, and I don't want to get history facts wrong. And, but I was like, you know, it'd be more interesting for us to talk about games that kind of influenced us and made us who we are today as gamers. And, and I literally spit it out as that. I didn't say video games only. I didn't say, you know, it has to be a tabletop or a card game. It could be anything. So any game that changed your life. Uh, so that's basically the topic of today. And I told everybody to keep it to like under three games, but you know how we are. It'll probably get kind of wild, um, but that's that's it. So I've played a lot first? of games, so there's like 70 or so. We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Okay, so I, I'll, 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 I'll go first. But Jesus. I, I do want to start off by saying I don't necessarily think that I completed the assignment. Um, the first game I want to talk about is, well, I used to have to travel a lot for my job. And so like three weeks out of the month I was traveling. So I got a Nintendo DS. This is how old, how long ago it was. I got a Nintendo DS and I played, uh, one game specifically, uh, until, I actually finished it and it was the very first, I'm pretty sure the very first game I actually ever finished. Nice. And it was maybe the Simpsons game. It was a great game, but it, so as far as like changing my life, uh, I, it changed my life in that I finally finished it. And I was just like, I remember being 
in the hotel room in Andover, Massachusetts. And I was like, yes, yes. I was so excited. Um, <laughs> like jumping on the bed as, yeah, it's <laughs> like a 28 year old. And yeah, yeah, there was like nobody in this hotel. It was, it was owned by a golf course. It was a, a great hotel. And I'm sure everybody was like, what the fuck is this lady like, doing? Damn. So, she never had sex yeah. before. Calm I know. <laughs> yeah. Who did she invite back? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> So that's the game. The first one that came to my mind. That's cool. No, I mean, it was that, would you say that kind of like got you into feeling like you were a gamer? Like you like, man, I, I yeah, I this. actually like, finally felt like, cause I had played lots of games and right. had, like, we all know, I just kind of suck at them all. But I, yeah, that, and, and, and Brian, for those of you um, who are listening, uh, Brian is showing part of the game on uh, the screen for us. So check it out on uh, YouTube later. But yeah, it actually made me feel like I I was amazing. Did I complete everything? Was is it, it, I, def, I def, definitely wasn't a completionist. I didn't go back. I was like, I did it. I'm done. Let's move on. <laughs> but it was and it was a great game. I really actually really enjoyed the game. I would I would play it again if I had my Nintendo DS still. Sweet. Yeah. Any more? Or is did you want? Oh, to... I thought I'd let somebody else go before. You want somebody else to go? Okay. Yeah, Maybe and then I, we'll, we'll just like roundtable it. All right, so I'll go. So again, a lot of games in my history. I mean, talking like as like I was literally probably five or six when I first started playing. Uh, I would say games on my own. Like I would probably play games before that with like an older brother, uncle, or somebody. Um, but like on my own, like I've been playing, like I remember playing Wolfenstein 3D. Like I remember that was a thing and there was like a mod for like Barney characters. Like it was crazy. Anyway. <laughs> um, but when I got older, once I got to a teenager and there was one series, but really the first game that really kind of like made me go, wow, like this is more than just a game. This is almost like a movie. And it really was. And that series is Metal Gear Solid. Uh, uh, yeah. So Metal Gear Solid is, uh, it's like an espionage kind of like spy um uh, movie game uh you basically have your main character solid snake who you start off as um uh, basically infiltrating this base uh, and you kind of learn as it goes on what the you know the purpose of it and everything is but just like any good spy movie there's obviously like twists and and traitors and all these different things that you kind of uncover as time goes on and to me that was really cool like the whole plot of it was just like kind of amazing especially as you know as a teenager kind of playing through like this so so-called movie um, with different voices, different characters, and 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 the middle, and actually, uh, Mission Impossible was also one of my favorite movies back in that time. So very much like that, where like you find out at the end of the movie that like you know the guy that was your boss is really like you know a double agent kind of thing. Like it's just a really cool you know experience to kind of play through. And uh, but the game did a lot more than that. There, it kind of pushed the boundaries on like the the fact that you could just jump in a cardboard box to hide. Like you just throw the cardboard box on and you just like walk around and like just sit down and like people <laughs> just walk by you. Um, stuff like that. But then uh, one of the biggest battles of that game was against a boss named Psycho Mantis. And the reason why Psycho Mantis and why this game and why Konami did this so well uh, was that you get to the battle scene and like you start trying to attack him and nothing you can do can hurt him. He And he basically keeps saying it out loud like, ha ha ha, like. I can read your mind like you can't attack me, blah, 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 you know, and another part that I didn't get to experience, but I found out later is if you had any saves on your memory card, because those were a thing on their PS1 uh, <laughs> Yo, that would uh, were that were days. Konami games, he would have actually read those out like, oh, I've seen you been playing, you know, whatever game. Uh, so that would have freaked out. But I didn't get any of those because I didn't have any other ones. But uh, but when the things was is what you find out in order to actually attack him and do anything to him you had to plug your controller into the second port so you're playing this game first player you're in the first port you literally had to take out the remote like the the plug and plug it in to the second controller port for him to be not able to read your mind so at that point you could actually like attack him and do things and he's like oh my god i can't see what you're doing now like what's you know and it's just a really cool like mechanic of a game that i've never seen before like something that was like breaking that fourth wall where like I have to literally do something in my like room to make something happen. Like it was just mind blowing. Um, and they did other things like that. Like the, like there was a part where uh, like your boss basically says uh, you need to contact Meryl. And you're like, I don't know Meryl's they have a thing called a Kodak, which is like a little like 
uh, messenger thing. And you could talk with like a radio and, uh, but you're like, I don't know the frequency. How do I know that? He's like, it's on the back of the game. And in the game, you had actually a copy of the game, like in the inventory, but oh, you look wow. at it, there's nothing there. There's nothing like, you know, but literally you had to take the back of the CD case and on the back of the case, there would be a screenshot of all the different parts of the game. And like one of them was Meryl and it had her frequency. And that's how you were able to like input that in and start talking to them. So it was just which, little things like that. Which this caused a great deal of rage and frustration for those that were doing like rentals from Blockbuster. Mm. Ooh. Or didn't even think about that. Oh yeah, I can see that. And this was, you know, GameStop. internet was out, but it's not like it was just everywhere, you know? Yeah, that's kind of funny. I never thought about that. I definitely owned yeah, there was, it. Um, there was a lot of frustration of people that had no clue because they're like, where do I find this? And they're, they're like, look at the back of the box. I'm like, I don't have that. <laughs> I physically don't have the back of the box. Yeah, I mean, so the game did a lot of things like that. And even, uh, I said the series because I played Metal Gear Solid 1, 2. Uh, Metal Gear, so the, uh, Metal Gear started on Nintendo. Metal Gear Solid was the first PlayStation release of a new new game of the same series. Um, but Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, Sons of Liberty, uh, did a lot of things like that too, continuing on the story. Uh, and one of the parts of that at the end of that was like, literally, I'd played this for like 17 hours straight. I was like a Thanksgiving weekend. I was like, just wired, like 5 a.m. And the game starts like glitching out and like doing all these weird things. And it shows like you're going to your death scene where it usually does the music and it cuts your camera, like the gameplay in the corner and like the rest of it's like continue or quit. And it's like, but you're still playing. And I was like, wait a minute, like, what the hell? And the guy's like, turn on. And it's like his face is all turning into a zombie. It's like, turn the game off now. Turn it off now. And I'm like, I should probably turn this off. Like, I'm freaking out because I've been playing this game for 17 hours straight. <laughs> um, so just the whole series in general has done stuff like that. And, it, and it's been really cool. Like, I just that's to me, probably one of the like the ones that I can remember that really kind of stuck out to me as far as like, you know, kind of changed the way that I would think about playing video games, which is pretty neat. I would say one of the video games that really blew my mind was the original Star Raiders. And Star Raiders. I got Star Raiders on the Atari 2600. And the Atari 2600, while a good system, uh, also, you know, had Pitfall on it, the first third party game for a system. Uh, or at least from EA, the first manufacturers of third-party games. But Star Raiders was a game where you had, like Atari 2600 had a joystick that you could move with a single button on it. Or you had the turn things and it had like a button on each side, the paddles. Right. And all of a sudden you got this game that you play with a joystick, you fly a ship around, and you have a second controller that has a keypad on it uh, with essentially 12 buttons. You could put like things over the top of it and you could jump uh, hyperspace from place to place, visit star bases, uh, you know, go to different parts of the galactic map and. So you're saying this is like an people. early no man's sky. <laughs> uh, yes, pretty much. That's awesome. Um, and that was just on the 2600. Then it came out on the 5200 and on the 5200, it was pretty amazing considering all things. And, uh, this is actually some really good footage from, uh, this is Pete, uh, that got this. It's hard to find clean footage of yeah. <laughs> something that was meant to go on a, a, a CRT essentially. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was like you had flight simulator. You had the ability to see whether ships were in front of you or behind you with a small little radar. Um, when you did hyperspace, you didn't just jump from place to place. You had like this reticle that you had to keep in the center to make sure that you actually arrived where you were planning on arriving and you could like go off a little bit. Uh, you can even uh, get shuttles from uh, uh, ships. I don't remember if they surrendered or not. But it was just, you know, you took it from like these very simple games like Breakout and Warlords, which good games, Circus, uh, on the Atari 2600 and then later on the 5200. And then having, there's the shuttle coming in, uh, 
transferred <laughs> stuff. Oh, I'm just going to destroy the star base anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, nice little galactic map here. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, warp energy, like, made it so you could only transfer, uh, you know, go so far. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's some little bit of combat there. Uh, ships coming at you. I mean, that's kind so of the you, cool thing about those old games is like a lot of it's imagination because it wasn't really yeah. you know, graphic heavy. It doesn't really show you no. a lot, but like you really felt like I'm sure you felt like you were really flying through space. Like this was like cutting edge, like at the time, you know? Yeah. And, and every game was a little bit different. There was, it wasn't like this same old map, the, uh, you know, it randomized when you started off. Uh, and as you went to like free, areas oh yeah that's, that's actually the the warp so there's the reticle you have to keep in the center to make sure you get to end up being the place that you want to be so i like i was shocked at how expansive and big this was considering how small of the games i was used to at the time um and again they just made it better when it went to the uh, 5200 Oh, which the 5200 was at that time pretty much like arcade quality for most of the games that had, you know, Centipede and Pac-Man and stuff like that. So it was, it was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my brain immediately watching that was just like, this is, <laughs> this is what No Man's Sky would have been if it <laughs> 30 years ago. I would uh -oh. love to see <laughs> I, I, I think you did. I would love to and his wow. uh -oh. attitude uh, do <laughs> Star Raiders on the 5200 like an emulation. It'd be amazing. I'm I'm back, I think. Am I, I back? You just yep. tried to... You're back. I thought your brain back. just went blank. Yeah. It, yeah, you like... Oh, oh, you like oh. James Perfect sucks timing. This. That, uh... <laughs> God. Wow. Space Sims were something different. Oh yeah, back in the day, very different. God, makes you really reflect on No Man's Sky's release. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh. Yeah. Um, I'm still trying to get over that. Just watching that footage, I was like, I feel like you know, I feel like if that was like my era of game, that would have been the game that I was interested in. But like my brain looking at it now is like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I'm uh, supposed to be talking about. Why, there's a reason why when I uh, stream on Twitch that I'm old man Phoenix. <laughs> Oof. Um. There's a. Oh, there's a lot of like really big games for me. Um. Obviously, some of them stand out over others, but there's a lot even that stand out. So like. The first game I ever really played for myself completely by myself that was like my thing was Pokemon Blue. Oh well. Yeah, on my on um, my game because like that came out in what 1996, Seven. 97? Yeah, 97. So I would have been I would have been 6 years old. Um almost 7 I think when I came out. Um and I remember playing that. That was like my first ever solo game. And I had a blast with it. And seven-year-old me was like trying to figure out little bugs in the game and ways to do things. And then like when I go to the library, I go on. I even forget what that thing was. Was it Net? Was it Netscape? I, f I forget what the browser was all the way back then. But uh, there were like some things online where you could find like old forums, like old old forums, obviously back then that would tell you like the missing no bug and stuff like that, That's and like navigator. screwing around on cinnabar island for it um so i think pokemon was like definitely influential for me because like it was my first game it was what like got me into gaming completely i used i mean i used to play like super mario on the super nintendo but that was like three or two at the time so my mom would play the game for us and we would watch her play it yeah so my mom was the og gamer in the house. Aww. <laughs> now she's she's all Farmville, which is fine. Farmville's a game. That's just a life simulator that hey, costs more know. money. Yeah. <laughs> we we talked about how, you know, people do their thing all day and then simulate all night and that's okay. I mean, you know, wow. there's plenty of times around like happy. playing. Is that what the kids are calling more simulators? <laughs> No, I yeah. think I like Pokemon because that was like, I definitely had I had red 
And yeah, I definitely put a lot of hours in that too. Unfortunately, all I could find was this uh, footage here that seems to be of Zelda. Oh no! Yeah, I never, I never played Zelda. Never played it. It, lo- it looks, looks interesting though. You never played Zelda? That's bullshit. No, my first ever Zelda game was Breath of the Wild. Are you for real? We're learning I'm, a lot. I'm. You dead didn't serious. have the shiny gold cartridge. Nope, I did not play Zelda. We were really broke, so like, like a buying additional game wow. systems and games was like, like a no go. Like my after the after the Game Boy Pocket, which was my first console technically, <laughs> um, the next thing I got was a PlayStation One, and I got it by helping an old guy who lived on the street clean out his entire house and like his yard, and he was like, "I have this PlayStation One, you can have it." If you help me with Damn. all this stuff. And I was like, this was I last know. week. I was I'm like, in. I don't even know how old I was. 10, 11, something like that. Um, and I was like, yeah, for sure. Like, that's sick. <laughs> like, all I got is a Game Boy Pocket. That sounds awesome. <laughs> You're like, all you want me to do is clean your house? Like, <laughs> like sweet. I mean, he had a lot of trash, but like, whatever. Um, and then I managed to buy myself a PlayStation 2. And then that was a wrap after that. It's just kind of took off after i started pc gaming but yeah like pokemon was my first one and then after that it all became mmos like the biggest game i ever played for me time wise was lineage 2 um and that's where i met most of the people that essentially raised me on the internet (laughs) so like (laughs) i played that game for so long i ran guilds on that game and alliances 13 year old me with like a guild full of like 30 to 40 year olds or at least at the very least, like most of the people in there were 20 or older, but a lot of them were in their 30s and their guild leader was this like 12, 13 year old kid from Canada. So like <laughs> little Bruno just sitting there like, yeah, guys, we're going to mess those guys up at the next castle siege. <laughs> um, they're like, man, this guy. And they're like, oh, God, he's actually really good. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, this, you tell this kid something and he like runs with it. He, he figures it out real fast. And then um, and then after that was Terra, which was another MMO. And that's where I met. My wife. Aww. <laughs> and a lot of the friends that I still associate with to this day are people that I met on those MMOs. So, like, even though it wasn't the gameplay necessarily that drew me to them, it was the community that came from MMORPGs back then, which is, like, long since dead now because the idea of MMOs is, like, it's a theme park. So they're like, no, 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 no. Screw the whole community thing. We want you to be interacting with a time sink that, makes you come back every single month and give us $15 and buy every expansion. We don't, we don't want you to actually talk to people because if you talk to people, then you guys will just talk about a different game that doesn't suck as much as ours. <laughs> Somehow I turned, what are your, like, what are your favorite games into? Let's <laughs> shit on the entire MMORPG industry. And you know what? They deserve it. And I'm going to go back to world of Warcraft this month and I'm going to hate every moment of it. <laughs> Good God. Stop. So I got a question. Did you have the little light for the Pokemon or the pocket? Game Boy Pocket. I did. I got it as a gift. Nice. Those are the best. Yeah, the little. Uh, I, it was weird. I think I had one that was meant for like the Game Boy Color, but it still fit the same port. So it was yeah. like the little purple see-through one, yeah. kind of thing. It was the same thing. But yeah, and I also had like a Game Shark cartridge. But like, I um, I don't even remember. Like, I think I got it from like a yard sale or something. Somebody didn't know what it was, and I was like, "Whoa! Like, can I have this?" And they were like. What is it? And I was like, I don't know. It's like a thing for a game. And they're like, Do you have like a dollar? And I was like, No. And they're like, Just take it. And I was like, Yes, <laughs> sick. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna I'm gonna hack the game. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day with Game Sharks and Game Genies, that's that's like a whole other level. Of people oh just God, don't understand nowadays? That's crazy. Yeah, nowadays it's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna cheat on this game. That'll be fifty dollars per month, please. Yeah. So. So I, um, another game that I would say changed my life, maybe a little controversial, um, Brian, what, we had a blast from the past moment talking about a game store that existed like in the eighties and nineties, it's now shut down and you said it in a, a podcast, like three months ago Babbage's. and it was like it, it was Babbage's there was another one 
But I do remember walking into Babbage's and the other one that was just like Babbage's, the, their competitor. And my somebody very close to me in my life who was an adult um, bought Leisure Suit Larry, the OG <laughs> Leisure Suit Larry. And I think that's when I realized like, oh my God, games are for adults and I can't play this one. And I wanted to play it so bad. And for those of you who don't know about Leisure Suit Larry, it was at least the older versions, not at all PC. It was very, it, 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 the first one was called Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. And <laughs> leisure suits were like suits that were creamy colors or vibrant colors. And the they always had their sleeves rolled up and they would wear them to bars and hit on women. And there were like strippers involved and stuff like that. And I always wanted to go and my parents would like lose track of us. And like, we'd go to the leisure suit Larry demo and they'd be like, what are you doing? So I thought that leisure suit Larry, <laughs> I actually might try to play leisure suit Larry <laughs> just they to have a lot finally of see what it's all. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. There's about a billion of them. They, the last one was from, 2020 so yeah i mean i could still definitely play it apparently it's on nintendo switch guess what i'm downloading <laughs> it's funny is like there's two games that i come to mind i think about like adult stuff it was like duke nukem 3d like you literally walk into a strip <laughs> strip club like, yeah the first level and the second one was uh police quests i think three or four uh so i my old family and i'm my old family my like babysitter and her family that's like who i was with a lot and they were all policemen. So like they had police quest because like it was fun for them. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. But it was very adult. Like there was a point oh, where yeah. you walk into a strip club or walk into like the, the wrong lo uh, locker room. So you go into females and they're like in bra and panties and you're like, oh, and you can't see anything. It's like graphics from like 1990. But it was hilarious. Like it was just like, oh, can't play that one anymore. Like they caught me, you know, it's just funny. Oh, look at all those leisure suits. <laughs> Oh, Man. Good old days. So the other game that I have, and this is probably not a spoiler to anybody, uh, but it's another like series, but that is actually Zelda. <laughs> Trash. Uh, Shocker. Yeah. What? <laughs> Surprise. Uh, the one that sticks out. So, I mean, I, I've played almost all of them. Um, there's a few that I have not played, mainly mainly because of the console that it was on or released or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, not so a real so gamer. <laughs> but uh <laughs> The one that stuck to me forever is Ocarina of Time. Uh, it's the one that released on Nintendo 64. So 3D graphics kind of uh, breaking that barrier of like, you know, next gen technology. And like, so the whole idea of like the Zelda, you know, story is that the main character whose name is Link, mm -hmm. <laughs> not Zelda, spoiler, uh, is basically trying to save the land of Hyrule from Gandorf uh, or Ganondorf or Ganon, or whoever he is in that game, because he changes his name type of each game. Um, and has like a different, uh, almost like persona or like entity build or whatever. But, uh, but anyway, so Ocarina of Time was really neat because for one, it was, it was definitely an adventure game uh, and it was in 3D. Uh, and when you get to Hyrule, like the, the actual pasture of Hyrule, um, it almost felt open world. Like it was kind of a wild <laughs> thing where you could just kind of run through you know, the area, the field and just kind of go different places and they could go into this little town and uh, and very much like the first game, the original Legend of Zelda from Nintendo NES, um, it was kind of open in the sense of like you could kind of pick your path like like you could just go straight to the third last dungeon and walk in and it's pitch black, but you don't have the weapons to do anything, but you could go there like there's no stopping you. Um, Ocarina of Time was a little more limited on that, uh, but there were temples and these certain temples that you had to go to to solve. Like you could kind of get to some like, and you can actually watch videos on YouTube. People have broke this game very much and they've actually added in new like modes to play uh, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. But um, one of the things that I actually was looking up some stuff about it because I just want to make sure I remembered stuff. But uh, the one of the, the actual first games that did lock on targeting for 3D was like actually a Ocarina of Time. Um, but you know, you think that now like 3D targeting, like you're just going to target an enemy and you always stay camera angle locked to them. Like that's just something that every game does now. It's not really something you think about, um, but that was very new in this game. 
Uh, but the whole point of the game in this one, which because every Zelda game is different, like in the this type of the story of like, what's the the thing, right? Uh, in this one, he had Ocarina and he could actually play songs uh, to to trigger certain emotions or whatever. Uh, and in this one, he actually was able to play a song of time. And if you play this at the actual um, the temple, uh, Temple of Time, you would actually travel through time. So you start the game as like little Link, like baby Link, essentially like teenager, preteen. Uh, and then when you travel through time, you become adult link and it's like a darker, scarier world because, you know, obviously the darkness have taken over more and there's actually like zombies and stuff. It's kind of weird. Um, but it was just a really cool aspect where like you play this whole game and then just like the original, it goes when you beat the game, it does like the dark side. Um, you basically travel through time and all of a sudden now, like everything is just more evil, you know? Um, but in this game, you had to travel back and forth a lot. There was a lot of things you had to like go back in time to remember and go do and go back in the future to do something else. So um, other thing with that game, too, is fishing. And uh, obviously, if you know me now, yeah. like, I love me some survival crafting games where I'm just, you know, we sitting also on the beach love fishing, wood. drinking a can of beer. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's, that's the whole thing with this game, too, is fishing. There was a fishing spot you could go to. And there was always this rumor of like you could catch the Loch Ness Monster. And it was like, oh, shut up. Like, and this is like back before. That is actually internet. really like, cool. You'd have to go buy the Game Informer magazine that have like, you know, the whole walkthrough. And uh, but no, like it, it was legit. Like you like people would like I had friends would be like, oh, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Do like there's no Loch Ness Monster. And and then now if you look it up, there was actually a Loch Ness Monster that if you you had to do a certain thing, like a certain like few steps to make that happen. Um like certain time of day, blah, blah, blah. But it was just like really cool things like that that you could like. And it was just not it wasn't like throw it in and you just push the button and pull it out. You had to actually reel it in and do like the whole thing with the mechanics with the controller and stuff. So um, it was just a really neat game. Uh, the other one that I have for Zelda is Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. That one to me, that always has a soft spot in my heart. Like I just love that like look of like the old school, like 16 bit or 32 bit games where you could just like top down, run around and and discover things and like just it was a lot of puzzling but it's just it's zelda it's a zelda game and it's, it's just really neat um but yeah those two games to me like that that really locked me into the zelda like you know uh franchise i guess but um original zelda legend of zelda on nintendo like you know anything like that breath of the wild i mean all of those games have been super good and that's kind of what got me into like playing it you know adventure games and stuff like that Quake 2. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> All, and for those of you who can't hear anything, it's because we're busy watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but why specifically Quake 2? Quake, Quake 2 was something that um, both myself uh, and my wife played, um, went to land parties. Oh yeah. Nice. Ah, uh, uh, computers there. Um, that's awesome. Talk about the good and old days. Like, and, and I mean, and, and when I say my wife, it's, I'm, I'm unfortunately in this case, talking about my first wife. Oh. Uh, although my second wife very much loves to play it as well. Um, but, this was the game that uh, before I had played first person shooters before and had horrible, horrible motion sickness. And I was like, I, I like, I can't do this. Like, I can't play these games. These games suck. Um, I played Quake 2 and I was like, oh my God, there's something about this where it doesn't cause me motion sickness and I feel pretty good. And because of that, this was the first game that started me down the very dark and expensive <laughs> path of building a game machine and specifically buying 3D add-on cards. Because at the time, they were add-on oh, cards. Wow. The Voodoos at the time. Oh, God. Yeah. I, I had original Voodoo. I had a Voodoo <laughs> 2. That's a name I haven't heard and then, in a while. <laughs> and then I had uh, uh, a Riva TNT after that. And then TNT 2. But the original cards, they only did 3D. You had to do 2D out of your computer 
with a pigtail, plug it into the 3D card, and then it came out of the 3D card and went into your monitor. And all the 2D was handled by your onboard video, and all the 3D was handled by your add-on 3D card. Guy in that and, video was getting pweened. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, the cards did both. Uh, you know, they had AGP ports, advanced graphic port. Uh, it, it, yeah, uh, Quake 2 just started me down that path. It, it was also where I had my first, uh, you know, gamer tag, is if you, if you want to call it that. And I had specifically done it ironically. I was like, okay, I'm going to play against these other people in the office. We're literally on our office network playing this. And I was like, I'm going to choose this badass name because I know these guys are going to kill me. They're good. They played it more. They're going to totally destroy me. Right. So I was like, I'm Reaper. Uh, and then the funny thing is, is apparently I was pretty good at it and I was just tearing them up. And then once I got, I literally had a voodoo card in my work computer. <laughs> and, um, uh, it was it was very very funny because a lot of them didn't like bring in 3D add-on cards to the work computer, and it made it a lot easier to destroy them. Uh, so using technology to your advantage there. Nice. nice. Did you ever get a quake egg? No. I did. That was one of the first times. What's a I quake egg? Ha- having a migraine. Oh, okay. Because just like he's saying with the motion sickness, uh, and I guess it's probably part of that, is the original Quake <laughs> is when I got mine, but it was basically playing this game. It's all, and, it, and this is all like glitch, is what they call this, because um, it's fast paced, like shooters, where it's not like Modern Warfare, where you're trying to level up and get like attachments. And it, it's a little slower than this. is fast paced. Like you literally can shoot one rocket and destroy someone and, and blow them into bits and pieces. Like it's, it's crazy. Um, so. Like I got a quake ache and that was a, like a massive headache. Oh. It was just terrible. But uh, but no, like I get it because like I had an older brother that played a lot of these games too. So I'd watch him and then I'd try to play. And obviously I wasn't very good. But like Quake, Quake Two, I mean Heretic, I mean uh, like Unreal Tournament. That was another big one actually. Yep. And as far as the FPS world, Unreal Tournament, like two thousand three, that was probably like the one that really got me into to playing a lot of those games. But uh, but yeah, I, I can see that. That's that's awesome. Unreal oh, Tournament. Oh, yeah. There's a game I haven't heard of in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the new one just didn't do it. Yep. I don't know. Um, I guess all the Souls games. I don't know that I could choose one because I've invested so much time into Souls games in general. Um, but uh, the Souls games have a weird balance to them where like, I use games to like unwind and relax. And I know this sounds weird. As stressful as Souls games seem, Souls games at their core are almost... They're a little bit of reaction and a lot of pattern recognition. So, like, once I've played those games enough, they become extremely relaxing to me because it is my brain recognizing a chain of patterns with some reaction in it that lets me, like get like this dopamine fix by doing what my brain is the best at so it's just like yeah i've seen all 13 attacks this boss has and i'm going to flawlessly murder it and then i'm going to feel good about it yeah it's almost like you're dancing at that point you know it's like yeah in that sense god i hate those games i hate (laughs) these games so much (laughs) like i literally played demon souls once and i i don't know what happened to it It disappeared I, i literally don't know like it just disappeared. I, you know, that was a thing when Dark Souls One was a thing. Most people didn't know that Demon Souls existed. Dark Souls One was kind of like the one that skyrocketed to its yeah. weird fame. <laughs> I had was just stupid. Oh my god, it was so hard. I had so many friends who would see me and my other friend playing it, and they'd be like, "Oh, well, we're gonna buy that game." And so many of them were like. Yeah, um, I played it for like a few hours and then I couldn't get past the Asylum Demon, so I stopped playing it. And I'm like, like the the tutorial Asylum Demon? Like, <laughs> that's a tutorial? I'm like, yeah. The one that you kill in like five hits? And they're like, no, no. 
no, you don't. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just you fall off the ledge. You do like a third of its HP. You hit it five more times with a two handed attack or four and it just dies. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it just it was just always amusing to me. Like, I think those games really almost gate people out of them if they lack patience to understand that the game pretends to be harder than it is really it does it they, those games do pretend to be harder they at their face value they they try and show like look we're like a super hyper like reflex intensive combat intensive game but then like you die like a few times to the same boss and you're like is that thing just doing the same thing every time and it's like yeah 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 it's exactly what it is <laughs> yeah I, I can't and it's funny because demon souls was given to me as a christmas present from my brother as a joke i didn't know it was a joke <laughs> He was like, yeah, here. I'm like, oh, cool. I don't know what this game is, but awesome. And then, like, I started playing it, and I was like, this game is fucking terrible. <laughs> Demon Souls is really, honestly, unforgiving in comparison yeah. to Dark Souls. But, but like, yeah, I guess the uh, Souls games were big. It was, it was a joke, and he told me later, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, good, so you're not upset that I don't know where it's at now. Okay, good. <laughs> and funny enough, the, my other favorite game series, aside from that, is what I would consider almost a complete opposite in terms of RPG, which is the entire Ratchet and Clank series, which is like mm. super, super easy. Like anybody can pick up a Ratchet and Clank game, select whatever difficulty they want for the most part. You can just select the normal difficulty. It's fine. And you will absolutely obliterate everything in those games. They are so easy. And yet I get just well, as much guess enjoyment. Guess getting Ratchet and Clank. Just as much enjoyment out of those games as I do at a Dark Souls, just because like you could just get the dumbest guns in those games stock up on a ridiculous amount of ammo and then just run around blowing everything up spectacularly. I remember playing those like locked in my room as like a young kid just being like, yeah, just, just blow shit up for the next four hours. <laughs> That's awesome. Good times. Well, uh, electronic boutique. Electronics Boutique, yes. Oh, EB Games. Yeah. But it was when it went way back oh, in the before, day. Yeah. Electronics Boutique. I love that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. EB we Games about, we is still EB Games in Canada. And the mm. games that were sold in the Ziploc baggies. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I remember uh, EB no. Games. So I, I, I'll, I'll wrap mine up super fast. Um, Lemmings. Because it was like super. That that's what really got me into Whoa. puzzle about games. The old like PC game, the like old, the old one. OG. Oh, man. Stuck the disc in. Oh, I loved that. I it was so cute. So like, many lemmings. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you know it, you get so frustrated. <laughs> you're like, purpose. let these fuckers die. Bye. Just just go literally. I would just and, shoot and then they're like, the ah, explosion ah, ah. yeah. <laughs> just blow them up. And yeah, because <laughs> you that can. Came, yeah, that came out February of 1991. So I didn't yes. even exist yet. Yeah, well, you know what? I was a year old. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and then the other one I wanted <laughs> oh to quickly God. mention <laughs> was uh, y'all remember Photo Hunt? So Photo Hunt. I'm not sure that. Okay, one. so Photo Hunt is a game where they had it at like uh, not necessarily Chuck Cheese, but like arcades and stuff. And it's a screen, and it's got you know the two photos. It's just like Highlights These magazines. are the bar games. Yeah, you get the, the what, except the one I was really fucking good at was the erotic photo hunt. Yeah, the naked at women. Fucking I bars. Yes. The bar oh my god, that was my fucking jam. We would just I love that shit. Literally drink at the bar and just sit at the bar yes. and be like tap, 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 tap. Yes. Like go, 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 go. Uh, <laughs> best wow. Game. Oh my god. Best games. Oh I'm my doing god. a podcast with a game. bunch of DJs. Okay. If right, you yeah, have not played erotic photo hunt, you have got to. Since we went down this rabbit hole real quick, can you pull up a game called uh, Jill of the Jungle? There was an old PC game that I used to play as a platformer called Jill of the Jungle, and I used to love the shit out of that game. Like, it was a very old, like, Lemming-style graphic game, but, man, it was, like, so much fun. I don't even know why I had so much fun with this, but it was just so much fun. Like, that was Jill one of, of those... Jungle. Yeah, Jill of the Jungle. It was, like, one of those old, like, like super old PC games where, like, I don't know how many <laughs> levels there were, but there wasn't... Went a whole lot going on with the game, but man, it was fun. <laughs> I mean, oh snap, here it is. Yep, man, this was like. <laughs> if you enjoy this, you won't want to miss Drum Blaster. <laughs> but yeah, it was like puzzles and stuff. Like you had to oh, yeah. like collect things, and yeah, this was. This I was like old, her outfit too. Sure. She looks like 
a fucking rocking Tinkerbell. In my yeah. Wings. Yeah, really. But there was so many weird levels and stuff like it kind of got like spacey at one point. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was an interesting game for sure. It's a God, I just, like, bring it back. It's bringing back <laughs> some memories. Right the second oh she gosh. threw that glaive, I was like, yo, that's just that's just Sivir from League of Legends before she became Sivir from League of Legends. Different <laughs> hair color, but same idea. Absolutely jacked throwing a glaive around. <laughs> this is reminding me a little bit of the OG Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. A Nintendo classic. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Sorry. Well, on that note, give us a few minutes here. Listen to where from our sponsors and we're going to come back with uh, jam packed Kelly's Corner. Jam packed. Does it have jam in it? No. Tomato jam. Dyke, I'll get some jam. And we're back. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to get into Kelly's Corner because I think she has some interesting things to tell us about. Uh, usually it's always interesting. Just one interesting thing. Yeah, I, did, I did say usually. Yeah, usually. Yes, that's true. Usually. Not always. I, I'll, I'm going to limit this to one since we had a, a nice long beginning. So I'll call this Kelly's Halloween Hangover Corner. My husband told me about something very interesting. And uh, since we all talked about it, uh, all of us except for Bruno talked about it at some point uh, this past weekend. So, y'all, who was the director of Nightmare Before Christmas? Tim Burton. It's not. It wasn't Tim Burton. He got all the fucking credit. It's funny. I've never seen it, but. I just assumed. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's fun. No big deal. Okay. So. You have to see it once. Ah. Brian, you've seen it, right? Yeah, that doesn't mean I know anything about it, but sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, if all of the posters said Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton. So Tim Burton actually did write The Nightmare Before Christmas. You can actually go to or you can go to a used bookstore or because none of them, no regular bookstores, practically none of them exist anymore. There are a couple of um, them around, but Amazon it. Oh, you can actually buy the book uh, of books of Nightmare Before Christmas. So Timber did not direct The Nightmare Before Christmas. A guy uh, named Henry Selleck actually directed it. He was the stop motion animator. He is the stop motion animator. Um, When uh, Tim Burton, so Tim Burton, uh, designed some of the characters, some of the main characters he wrote the story. He showed up at the very end and like kind of clipped a couple of things up and was like, it's good. And then sent it out and everything was great. Uh, Selick and his crew were the ones who did everything. No oversight by Tim Burton. Uh, didn't have to consult with him or anything. Tim Burton was actually away doing a couple of other movies at the same time. I think one of them was Ed Wood. So, He's in L.A. doing all of this stuff three weeks before the movie is set to go into theaters. They start saying it's Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. And Henry Selleck's like, WTF? I just spent if I had known you were going to be playing this as Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, things would have been a little if I'd signed up for that, then it would have been fine. But that's not what happened. So they decided because of the success of things like Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands and um, Batman Returns, which Tim Burton did direct, they were going to capitalize. Disney was going to capitalize on this moment and call it Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. So recently, Henry Selleck was doing uh, a an interview with um, a... I mean, I want to give them credit. Um, AV Club. And 
hold on one sec sorry guys really great podcast really great kelly's corner so he he was doing an interview with them and they were asking about like all the partnerships that he's done and he's like can can we just stop for a second i'm I mentioned it at the beginning of the interview, but let me let me just go back through the, with this. Like, there were no like partnerships. There were no you know, let's work on this together. That's not how it's usually ever worked out. It's he's been given free reign or kind of teamed up with somebody, but this part is his. So. He was creating Nightmare for Christmas, not really a partnership. That ended. They started, he started doing James and the Giant Peach, which Tim Burton was a producer on. But again, Tim Burton got a bunch of the credit. At the same time that that was happening, the first Toy Story was happening. And that was all computer graphics. That's the way things were going. Yeah. And so that kind of overshadowed James and the Giant Peach, but other stuff was happening behind the scenes with James and the Giant Peach. I didn't Peach. realize those came out around the same time. Yeah. You, yeah it, I had, I had to, th- I, I, I was well, surprised I guess too. Pixar, like that was a whole nother <clears throat> yeah. level of like movies. That, that literally it's changed a whole everything different in Toy Story. So. Genre, right? Yeah. yeah. So stop motion is one thing. Computer graphics, completely different. So Burton, he, Tim Burton did produce James and the Giant Peach, but again, really wasn't involved. Selleck got into the, a pissing match with one of the Disney execs, David Vogel, who he was not speaking kindly about. Go and read the AV, art, AV, the AV article. Like he was just, he, he was not happy. Uh, I guess David Vogel's ego was really getting in the way. He was trying to change too much of the, the movie in the stop motion. So it ended up turning out to be a kind of a, 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 not, not a really great movie because Selleck didn't have complete ownership of it. And he was getting told by Disney, well, this isn't going to be good anyway because there's no computer graphics in it. Overshadowed by toast toy story. So things kind of went to the wayside there. He talks to Wes Anderson or Wes Anderson sees his work as like, you're the shit. Hey, I'm doing this movie, A Life Aquatic. I need some stop motion stuff. Can you do it? Again, all Selleck and his team, they did all that. A Life Aquatic, The Life Aquatic was a fantastic movie. Then uh, he did Coraline all on his own. Henry Selleck found the a distributor. He wrote the screenplay. And it was all the stop motion was him and his team. That was critically acclaimed. Coraline is still an incredible movie to this day. I mean, if you if you look at it, if you haven't seen it, you definitely should see, should see that one too. So yeah. It. So Disney at the you know in the past was like, oh, stop motion, all on the past. You can't make a movie. It can't be profitable. And they were wrong. Uh, but you know who did a stop motion movie? from Disney that wasn't very profitable, Tim Burton and Frankenweenie, which is kind of sad. Um, so all of this is kind of coming out now uh, because uh, Henry Selleck is d- just did a new movie available on Netflix called Wendell and Wild, and it's from Key and, it, Key and Peele are stars in it. He makes it very, very clear that you know with this new movie, it was 90% Selleck, 10% Peel. And you know, while Peel was instrumental in helping to develop some of the world uh, to, to develop the world and some of the characters, Selleck and his team again did everything else. So they are billing this as a key and peel thing and not necessarily giving him all the credit. And so he's like, come on, man, give me a little bit of credit. There have been a couple of other articles written. So I, I, I saw the one article and I was like, wait, Google. So there has been a lot of other stuff, especially recently because of the release of Wendell and Wild. But definitely wanted to give him a little bit of credit because it's freaking amazing. It is a beautiful movie. Is it my favorite movie? No, not necessarily. But um, 
it's a fantastic movie and I, 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 I we, he does need to get some credit for it. So. Oh, that's really cool. Didn't know that. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like it goes through the whole industry, all of, all of the movies, like with like even, you know, star Wars, like the whole mm-hmm. space, all of that stuff is all like, you know, stop motion in the sense of like, you know, uh, like built sets, like little miniature sets yeah. and stuff. And, and you don't know who those people are. Like you never realize right. that like all of that was, it took a lot of work to do that. Like, I mean, even yeah. Die Hard. I was watching uh, the movies that made us about Die Hard and talking about like the, I can't, was it? Um, I can't remember the name of the tower. I, it starts with an N. I'm going to murder it, so I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> but, Nakatomi Tower? Not, yeah, Nakataga. Yeah, so it's like, like <laughs> the whole scene. What Brian said. What? <laughs> He's like, yeah, Nakataga. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Nakatomi. No. Nakatomi. Sorry. Uh, so, but yeah, like the whole end scene where like Bruce Willis like jumps off the top of the Christmas. roof. It's the best. Oh yeah, Christmas me too. But I forgot right ever. <laughs> I agree. Well, not the best. Uh, Christmas but like that whole ever, like helicopter true. blowing up and he's jumping off. Like that's all like you know miniature. It's not real. Yeah. Like it's, it's all, you know. The yeah, only that's, thing that's I'll really add to that is if you end up watching either of his movies and you like them, um, Coraline was actually he was the production designer on it right something like that he was the so, main he was the main the main person running the show but he did henry it in Selig. conjunction henry Selig did it in conjunction with um leica studios yeah um, he, he, and leica he did, studios did is like it. yeah leica studios is like the most at least in the u.s is the most renowned stop motion animation studio for like kids movies and they make a lot of amazing stop motion movies um one of my favorites Aside from Coraline, is actually called Paranorman, which is I love a hilarious movie. But they also have um, what was the name of that movie? Uh, God, like is it Kubi or something? Kubi in the oh, Kubi in the the uh, one string or something. Uh, Kubi in the Kubo. In the two, Kubo and the, the two strings or something. The two strings, yeah. That yeah. movie is awesome. That's that also by Leica Studios. It's the same okay. the same studio that made all those. So like all of their stuff is like super top notch because it's stop motion animation. It will pretty much hold up forever because you can't make is that story stuff. of the story of life. I think too is that them. Uh, I don't know. I, mean, I guess I could Google it, but <laughs> um, but yeah, they made a lot of anyway, good stuff. Those people don't get enough credit, so yeah. here's here's that. Like definitely. And yeah, Danny Elfman. Uh, uh, he did say when they were talking about he, they asked him, you know, about uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. He's like, well, if you ask me and Danny Elfman, the other would say the other made it, and because Danny Elfman did write all of the songs that are iconic, and it would not yeah. be the same movie if Danny Elfman had not been involved. So, absolutely, Let's talk about a collaboration. <laughs> yeah. So, get into some games we've been playing. I know we actually have. It's quite interesting because we went through a spell of like none of us have played anything. <laughs> and then now it's like this week. I'm like, damn, we actually have a lot of games on here that we've actually played. So kick it off, Brian. Uh, I've been playing Persona 5 Royale. Um, it's, been, it's, it's not a new game. This game's been out for a while, but it is new on Game Pass for PC. So because that I checked it out and said, Oh yeah, let's play around with this for a little bit. Uh, uh, it's, it's from the persona series, which, um, if, as, as you can guess, this is the fifth one, but kind of not because it's like an add on with Royale. Uh, you play this teenager in high school. Uh, you find out that you have a, persona which uh is kind of like this thing that you cut a deal with and it gives you powers it's uh it's to the devil it's really interesting and the funny thing <laughs> is too is that persona is not even the original series the original series is shen megami tensei also about teenagers saving the world with things that come out of their bodies it's so uh, weird that Brian loves these little teenager games in high school and stuff. He's like all about these type of games. 
I uh, I'm about good JRPGs. Uh, Him I and can't help it if uh, tens Japan's to got some pretty hundreds of millions of other people. <laughs> yeah, and hundreds of millions of other people. It's true. Um, it's it's pretty fun. I would say you know like it being on Game Pass and being free. I'm still like I'm a I'm a couple hours into it and still feel I'm in the tutorial. Oh uh, wow! Like any normal JRPG. Uh, it's very stylized. Even the menus are super stylized. Uh, and what makes it interesting, at least for this, I, I don't know if it's in the other ones or not, but you have uh, kind of a ticking clock each day and you can only do so many things and you can't do everything you want to do in every day. And you try to build up relationships with people because that actually unlocks new personas and new powers. Um, I'm you, glad you're showing me this. I've never seen this game before. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a JRPG, uh, yeah. but you know, you, you go out at night and you do missions and you like go over to this, uh, you have this navigator that brings you into this other world because like really bad people had create these palaces that are not in the real world but it's kind of like how they see the real world. Uh, you know, like there's this really pervy gym teacher that thinks he's the king of the castle, the high school. And you go into like his perception of the world and you battle him in that perception. And you like, oh. he's got, he's got like all these people from the volleyball team that are like slaving away and like being tortured and all this stuff. And it's not really those people because again, it's his perception of, of how he views the high school. So it's, it's, it's really got some cool concepts. It's really got some cool, fun things. Uh, and on top of that, it's kind of a fun RPG uh, with building up your powers and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And you like build up a persona really powerful and then like, it doesn't learn anything more. So you merge it with another one and, and you build up new powers through that new persona. And you like you, I, now I haven't gotten to this part, but apparently you make friends with the school doctor and she like, apparently, I don't know if she experiments on you or something, but then like, Oh, you know, like, this is, is, it, is no, is it goes places. Suit Larry. I was going to say <laughs> it a hundred percent. Japan goes places. <laughs> Okay, got it. Got it. Um, okay. And at the end of the day, you, you it, it see the whole thing starts that you're this that teenager track. <laughs> that saw this guy taking advantage and abusing a woman. So you came up and you told him to stop and you kind of shoved him back. He fell back and hurt himself and he sued you and won because he was an important big shot. And you got kicked out of your high school. Your family was so disgraced, they sent you away to this stranger that they hired to board you as you went to this other school. Like, like yes. it's a shitty situation that you start with. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool, like building yourself up out of it and like becoming essentially the superhero that is like, uh, taking out really evil people. And it keeps, and the whole thing's done in flash, uh, flashbacks because you're in the future when you got arrested. <laughs> oh wow it's weird it goes places it's like the Dahmer series <laughs> whoa Except that's another Campbell's podcast in. yeah and you're the true. good guy uh I have been playing I actually went back to New Man's Sky uh they released another new update and if you're not familiar with New Man's Sky what rock are you living under uh but uh the whole story of New Man's Sky initially it launched on PlayStation 4 was it 4 or 3 I don't remember now um, launched with PlayStation, whichever series it was. Um, but they kind of like rushed it out the door, uh, kind of made uh, Hello Games kind of push the game out way earlier before it was even new to be released. Got a lot of flack. Uh, and ever since then, they kind of like took it double and was like, we're going to make the best game we've ever anybody's ever made. And, and since then, they've really released. I think there's like, I don't even know, eight to ten uh, DLCs at this point that's all free just if you own the game they just keep pushing it out and they've added a lot of new content and a lot of new uh, capabilities and just uh, it's just really awesome so I haven't played it since probably the fifth one um, 
So I kind of stopped for a while, let it kind of build up. And now I'm going back and it's been a blast. Uh, again, kind of like your, uh, was it star Raiders, like flying through the universe, kind of discovering planets, you know, trying to figure out where I want to build a base. Uh, they've added a lot of, um, a lot of life to the areas. Like there's slightly like random updated people graphics. Yeah, slightly. It's it's similar it, to Star Raiders. Raiders. Yeah, it, it, it launched on PS4 and PC at the same time. PS4, that's what it was. Yeah, so it was like, you know, they've added a lot of, like, character to it, like, where the immersion is a lot better now, where I'm on a planet, and I'm like, I was literally, like, building something. I look over, and, like, another spaceship just landed next to me. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> I'm like, because and there is multiplayer, in a sense. Um, but I'm like, who the hell is that? And apparently it's a traitor that they just added into the game so like they just like land like random places now but anyway really cool game a lot of things going on in that and i'm um, having fun with it definitely a survival game they've added a new relax mode uh, which takes away a lot of that if you just want to play and just just really veg out and chill um, nice. so i'd say check it out it's uh you know it's it's whatever it's priced right now currently it's worth it because you're going to get basically you know 10 more games worth of content um, for the price you're going to pay. So even if you pay a full price, whatever that may be, it's it's definitely worth it. So check it out. It's going to get a lot of support. I mean, this is a dev team that got threatened to be murdered several times yeah, after the release cool. of the game. So if they're still working on it now, there's a good chance they're not going to quit anytime <laughs> soon. If yeah. they were going to quit, they would have done it ages ago. I well, mean, another they, thing too is... Go they ahead. did the right tactic when that happened too, where they just went dead silent. And they said, hmm. fine, we're not going to tell you anything. The, the right tactic for moving forward, maybe not the best tactic for self-preservation considering how psychotic people are, but yeah. I mean, people the UK police protected them. They so they, was... they legitimately at one point had you like, like had actual police escorts for all of the people on the team. Yeah. It was pretty nuts. Pretty wild. <clears throat> they, so. uh, they also did really good because they were putting out updates for this game. And then they had also another game, the first game they ever released uh, I don't remember the name of it right now, but uh, uh, what is it? Joe is it Joe Danger or something? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Danger, you're right? Um, and they actually were still putting out DLC for that. That's all included free. Like they actually went back like to do that. So they're like something hey, people we're not don't realize. Bailing on this game, like it's we're still. They free. actually have released another game since No Man's oh. Sky called oh. The Last Campfire, which is a small little artsy RPG. I feel like oh. I've seen that. That, that did surprisingly well. Yeah. Makes sense. Apparently two people on the team wanted to do their own little project. And Sean, the owner of Hello Games, was like, yeah, do it. Yeah, there do you it. go. We're good. <laughs> we Gucci. They can't turn out any worse than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't have PlayStation Ooh. down your back. Like, we need a launch title now. <laughs> we set up a whole new bar. It's it's buried somewhere under the Earth's crust. <laughs> So I, uh, I support Hello Games immensely. I actually, is it right here? I have, <laughs> I have Sean's number right here. <laughs> I actually have somewhere in my office, I have the physical Atlas Pass from when I took oh, part nice. in their ARG when the game was trying to remedy its horrible image. Um, and essentially, if you participated and did part of the math equations or whatever, they sent out um, these actual physical Atlas passes, Atlas passes or something that exists in the game. Spoiler. Oh, alert. cool. It's really cool. Yeah, they unlock like you get there's like three different levels and like <clears throat> you'll get to a door and it's like, oh, Atlas pass one needed. And you don't get it till later and you have to come back. If you ever yeah, do. my Atlas pass V4 in real life doesn't unlock anything yet. So, Sean, if you somehow ever see this and you, you, know, <laughs> you want to do something with that, I'm all ears. <laughs> Hashtag no man's sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work for you. Anyways. Right. um, We'll move on to. The game that I played, the only game that I've played really this week for the most part, with the exception of one other that I probably won't talk about. Um, I actually started playing a game called Days Gone, which I feel like anytime I've said that to somebody in the last week, they go, why does that name sound familiar? Why do I feel like that game's dog shit? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> Days Gone is another survival game brought to you by one of Sony's studios. It's the only game that studio has actually ever made to my knowledge. And it was a massive flop on release. Oh. 
Um, it got review bombed to hell. Oh, I remember and this. Vanished to the depths of nothingness. Um, people cited like weird issues, like they were like the characters are boring. There's a lot of bugs. The world is like not what we expected. Yada yada yada. Um, and honestly, I saw a lot of that, and it turned me off of the game. I was like, yeah, all right. Well, I'm not gonna touch yeah. it. Well, it was on sale for twenty dollars. I think I think the sale's over now. Um, but I was like, let me go look at the reviews. The recent reviews are like essentially to the effect of, we don't know what the hell people were talking about. This game is like amazing. And it it really, I started reading into it. It seems like the game got review bombed to shit because people are going to be shitty. Um, and the game didn't have the issues that were, didn't have as many issues as were said. It almost suffered from like a miniature no man's sky were like, unlike No Man's Sky, it actually delivered on a lot of what it promised, but people expected more of it, so they kind of just dragged it through the mud, and then it ended up, its its minor flaws ended up being something really massive. But I've been playing the game a decent amount now. I've probably played like 12 hours of it, which isn't bad for a game like this, I suppose. I, I don't think I'm anywhere, I don't even know if I'm done with the tutorial, to be totally honest. The game is huge. Um, and essentially the premise is, is you are um a guy named deke or deacon you're a biker and something happens and people start getting kind of zombified it's not exactly clear like they're zombie-esque they call they're called freaks and the game opens up with you essentially living through that time of like when the freaks began and uh yeah you essentially do a time skip two years forward right at the beginning of the game and the game starts out and you are surviving in the Oregon wilderness as this biker who still wears his biker patches and everything. And you are considered a drifter. So someone who does not belong to any remaining surviving group of people, but instead just wanders the wilderness um, with your best friend, Boozer um, trying to unfold the mysteries of your wife's demise from when the attack of the freaks happened. (laughs) And, (laughs) The characters are incredibly well written. Like, you meet them, you're like, oh yeah, this character seems cool. And then the more you get to know them, you're like, wow, this character is an absolute piece of shit. And seeing them makes me physically angry um, because they did such a good job. Like, I feel like every character I've met fits with the world really well in the sense that everything that's like all the context around them and the world makes sense for exactly how they are and what they do. It's really interesting. And like you're met with these quests where like you have decisions as to like, where you want to send survivors and stuff like what camp you want to send them to, but all the camps suck in their own way. And then like the more I play the game, uh, initially I was sending them to one camp. And then after doing some quests where I sent like a younger girl there based on what happened to her, I was like, okay, absolutely not screw that camp i'm never sending anybody there again I-, I hope that i get to kill them in the future but like the game is really actually super well done so i highly recommend days gone weirdly enough wow uh, thanks i'll check it out a it's hidden been on my survival list, gem like it's it. not even that's the thing too like for somebody who like i'm i've got it set pretty high on difficulty which makes it really difficult like over the top at some points but the game seems to have a lot of good difficulty settings to the point where like, if you wanted to play it as like a chill survival game with heavy story emphasis and just a really beautiful world, you could a hundred percent do that. That's really cool. No, I'll yeah. play somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, uh, awesome. it's been a ton of fun and, uh, I mean, hopefully they do a lot of sales for it and people buy it or people just buy it at a full price. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the game was supposed to be, According to the studio, they intended to do a series of games, but because of how terrible the first one did, there will not be a Days Gone 2. Yeah, it'll be like the the game 10 years from now, but he's like, oh my god, this is the best game ever. <laughs> one could say that Days Gone is truly gone. Oh my Them god. days are all uh, gone. So, I want to, I didn't add this. <laughs> days are not coming. Have, <laughs> but uh, I did get, I finally got to level 60 in New World. So I did make that happen. So nice. I am level 60. I can now do all of the grinding that you're supposed to do in the game. If we're um, going to talk about New World, I'll mention this. World, yeah, New World just launched their new update. And somebody who I play games with 
has been trying to get people to go onto a new server as a fresh start. And I said, no, but I am playing it as of yesterday. I am level 31 on my new character. (laughs) I'm playing it solely as a troll because I want to be level 60 by the end of this week so that when he's inevitably not level cap, I can be like, hey, do you guys want to do anything end game? And then when he goes, when he goes, what? I'm going to be like, I'm level 60. Is anybody ready to play the game? Just, I'm doing this just for a troll. <laughs> so just like, to be clear. Your commitment, dude. I don't your understand. Commitment. I just don't get it. Like, H- I've literally played this game. <laughs> How? A lot. And How? like, I when I joined back, I was already 30 something. And it took me another like two almost two weeks to hit 60 it's taken me about eight hours mike, not even seven hours to hit level up. 31 mike. <laughs> you're a fucking machine also mike you have a kid i mean fair i guess there's a lot of time I mean, we in the can't evening even that I could start just be recording playing. until a certain time at night because of yeah this. It's true. true. Demurin has I also don't a lot yet. of extra time on his hand that you do not have. It well, now I want I want to be clear because I am impressed with myself. It is only like seven to nine hours of game time that I've used to hit thirty one, which I feel well, is yeah, very don't, low. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's just because you have a lot of free time. You min max the shit out of stuff like most people I haven't seen before. Like like. I would not be shocked if you put your mind to it that a year from now I would be like seeing Demurin on awesome games done quick or something like that. Cause he's just like, Oh yeah, I found the optimal way to get through this thing. I can do the game in five minutes. And it normally is a 10 hour game. Well, I'm level 60. <laughs> if you want to run some stuff, <laughs> anyway, uh, segue into the next game I did play, which is chivalry two. So I played chivalry uh, initially on steam um, Shrively 2 is actually included on Xbox Game Pass, so I decided like the other night me and friends were like, hey, you want to play something new? I was like, let's just try this, whatever. So we did, and we actually had a lot of fun, enough to where like when I got off work today, I kind of booted it up a little bit <laughs> just to play a little bit more because like it's a lot of fun. Um, and, and in the sense of like, so New World, like it's third person in the sense where you're running around MMO and you're slashing things, but it's not like realistic or anything. Um, but this game kind of puts me in the character of like a medieval character where it has like a sword and shield and you're like running around. And as you can see the gameplay, like, um, but there's a lot of, I can see how this game is like a, a very hard one to I love master. The blood. Yeah. It's, it's you know, first person shooter, but really like first person swordsman. Um, and you literally like have different modes and like everything you do, there's three different types of attack. There's a slash, there's a stab and there's like an overhead. And depending on who you're trying to hit, like if they're blocking, like you have to use certain ones. And if you turn the like your um, analog stick as you're swiping, like you can actually hit multiple people. And it's just a really fun like it's a different take on like FPS to me. It's been really fun. I've been enjoying it. Um, Just, you know, running around bashing people's heads in and, you know, kicking them. And just it's just been it's been fun. So, you know, um, a regular Thursday. Yeah, I mean, check it out if you're into the FPS and want something a little different. Uh, it's a good good way to do it. It's definitely team tactical because uh, if you get ganged up even by two people, and if you look at any movie or you know TV show like Game of Thrones or something like that where people are battling, like you got to think like one person in front of you. All right, I'm watching that person. I'm going to try to do everything he does, counter it, blah blah blah. But then you add in a second person to your side, or you know, 15 more people around you, like you die pretty quick. It doesn't matter how fast or good you're at blocking like you're going to die (laughs) like so there's a lot of that in this game which is pretty fun so i think having a little more like a team-based aspect of it is actually pretty neat so um and the last game that i played because i said i play a lot of games obviously i play a lot through shocktober Mm. but the last one i do want to mention from shocktober is phasmophobia uh talked about it many times before uh, but there's a lot of new updates they've done they actually did a halloween update this year and uh, me and day drinker got to play it uh over um last friday and the game has changed a lot like not in the bad way like it, it took us a while yeah. to kind of uh kind of get our our bearings again because yeah like the menus have changed there's a loadout option there's a store there's like the maps are different like there's new assets there's new everything uh, I, so I kept thinking i was adding stuff 
yeah to and, our loadout but i was adding yeah, stuff the, to like my cart basically <laughs> yeah it was it's super store strange and yeah is a lot different and a lot a lot more obfuscated than mm-hmm. what it was before yeah but uh i will say we had a lot of fun um you know still trying to figure out the game for that most part but you know even the asylum Asylum was probably one of our favorite maps, but we never really played it much because it was so large. And usually it just like to find the ghost room or ghost like it was so hard to do because it was such a massive map that uh, they actually reworked it completely. And it does look completely different. Like I had no idea yeah. anything. Was no, I had no clue. And, uh, they also have a different mode where you can like um, like kind of restrict certain areas of the asylum so you can make it a smaller run if you want to. Uh, but there's just a lot of cool stuff with the game. Um, definitely highly recommend it if you're if you're wanting to get scared or not get scared or just play a ghost hunting game. Uh, it's definitely one to check out because it definitely is the most realistic game in that sense of like something that will kind of put you in the sense of like a ghost hunter. So yeah. definitely check that one out. So to round out the phasmophobia or not phasmophobia, but the shocktober stuff, there were two games that Mike played last year. One was find yourself. And if you watched or have seen the footage from last year, find yourself was the one that started off on like the subway train and oh. there were lots of mannequins involved. And then you kind of like Clowns. flash back to your home. Oh. Yeah. So there was there was that whole clown section, right? Father's oh, yeah. Day is actually the, supposed to be the prequel to that, and it was just released. It was actually released the I think it was the day after a day after the last game you played solo. So Phasmophobia he played last oh, you right. played last Friday, and the, so the Friday before that was the last game, time you played something solo. So that did just get released, and I did download it i have not gotten a chance to play it yet but i also downloaded the demo for from day to day and from day to day is it has not yet been released it is just the demo that is the game that the i guess i i don't know i shouldn't call it a sequel that's the game that you play like a little portion of at the very end of summer 58 it's like oh here oh. here's our next game so that one hopefully is coming out soon so i'm going to play both of those definitely seem like shocktober contenders for I'll next say, year sounds like i'll be playing them next year <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll see how at that least works those out, yeah. i'm like i like the story enough to where i'm kind of intrigued, yeah but yeah is that the scary part so yep 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 <laughs> Well, cool. That uh, that wraps up our got our attention this week. Uh, if you are wanting more, uh, check out our website, sasgaming.com and uh, or send us an email, goa at sasgaming.com. We'd love to hear what you have to say, and we'll read it out loud, and we'll answer questions potentially. So go ahead and do that. Uh, if you want to support us a little bit more, patreon.com slash sasgaming. Uh, we always appreciate anybody that wants to do any of that. We really appreciate it. Uh, the new year is coming up soon, really quick. It's already November. Uh, we're Can't probably, believe it. You know, a few more podcasts and we'll be done for the year. And uh, But next year, a lot of big things. Uh, we're definitely going to try to push to get merch made. Uh, I want to be able to have a store that you know you guys can go to and buy and send, send quirky things to other people just because you love us. Um, <laughs> so feel free to do that. But yeah, that's, that's coming. So there's a lot of things like that in the works. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But... Until next week, our next podcast, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have fun. See you.